preach, we are to teach, we are to fight. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. Sunday evening greetings to everyone. When I think about the goodness of God and all that he has done for me, I can only sing hallelujah. An extra special welcome to one and all. To those viewing online via YouTube and Facebook, I am happy, we are happy that you have joined us. Remember, as we continue our service, to share the link. Invite your friends, invite your neighbors as we worship this evening, as we worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. You are viewing Mission Live, the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventist Sunday evening service. I am your host, Jacintha Stewart Francis. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Thank you so much for your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for your guidance and your protection. And Lord, even as we commence a new week, we thank you for all that we have been through. We thank you for your, the way you have kept us, the provisions that you have made. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. We ask for your cleansing. We ask that God that this evening service will be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. We bring before you our administrators of our Grenada Conference, our ministers, our workers. We bring every church member of the Grenada Conference. Lord, we thank you for each one and the work that is done. And even now, dear Lord, as we celebrate the ending of another year, the last month of the year, we want to say thank you, Lord, for carrying us through. Thank you for the provisions that you've made. May you bless each heart, O oh God, and may we continue to serve you in spirit and in truth. May we continue to live for you. May we continue to be witnesses for you and stand up for you, irregardless of what may come our way. Thank you, Lord, for this evening's service. Thank you for those who have already joined us. Thank you, Lord, for the way that you will lead us, dear Father, for the future. And we give you all the praise and the thanks for what you have done for us and the way that you have led us in the past. In the name of Jesus Christ, I offer this humble prayer with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. The topic for this evening's service is, What gift will I give Christ for his birthday? What gift will I give Christ for his birthday? A very intriguing topic indeed, don't you think? I think it is. With that question... I think I know a gift that I can give Christ for his birthday. I know a gift that we all can give Christ for his birthday. 
We can give him the gift of our voices. Let us join our choristers and musicians as we sing together with them in the song service, praising the name of the Lord. Welcome to you choristers and musicians. Let us praise the name of the Lord together. Amen. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our service today. And may we all join our voices as we sing some songs unto the Lord. So first we will start with Wonderful Words of Life, 286. Wonderful Words of Life. The story of Jesus. Tell me the story of Jesus. Tell me the story of Jesus. at last. 
be joy when the work is done. 4.30. lives I can face tomorrow. Five to six.
A special thanks to our choristers and musicians for leading out in the song service. Praise the name of the Lord. Indeed, we can give our voices as gifts unto the Lord. And of course, the gifts just keep on giving. Another gift we can share is a gift of prayer. Oh yes, Jesus loves when we pray in his name. Let us agree together in prayer with our dear Pastor Elvis Hilaire, who will now lead us into our intercessory prayer. Welcome, Pastor Hilaire. Greetings, everyone. We're glad that you have joined us this evening for our special service. And uh, it is now time for our prayer. And I invite you to join me as we pray. And I want to encourage you as we pray that you express faith, you express your belief and your trust in Almighty God, who is the one that can hear and that can deliver us from our different situations. Let us pray to Almighty God. O great God of the universe, we magnify your name. We praise you and we thank you that we can come together on this virtual platform to worship you, to praise you. What an awesome God you are. What a loving God you are. You are mighty. You are gracious. You are long-suffering towards us. And so we praise your majestic name. Look upon us, O God, and have mercy upon us. Search us and know our sinful, wicked ways and, and apply your blood to our lives. And, and please forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness so that as we pray to you at this moment, you will hear from heaven and you will answer our prayers. Oh God, I bring before you all our listeners and viewers this evening. We thank you for each one of them and we pray in a very special way, oh Heavenly Father, that as they participate in the service uh, this evening, Lord, they will receive tremendous blessings from your hand. Their spirits will be buoyed up. They will be revived, dear God, to trust you more, to, to participate and engage more in your work. Help them not to see their shortcomings or their failures or to see their limitations or the challenges, but help them to see opportunities of how God can use them to work for the honor and glory of God and for the blessing of humanity. Lord, we thank you in a very special way for the preacher uh, who will deliver your word. Thank you, dear God, for, for anointing. And we pray in a very special way that as we listen to your word, as we hear your word, Lord, we will desire to be better people. We will, be des we will desire to be, be doers of your word. So we pray in the name of Jesus that you will anoint your man's servant. You will touch and loose him this evening so that your words will come to us in clear tones. The words will come to us powerfully. Your words will speak and minister to us and we will cry out. We yield ourselves to Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Thank you and take care of us. Take care of the rest of the service. And at the end of this service, may we be drawn closer to Jesus Christ. May we be motivated to do his work. May we be motivated to hold on to Jesus Christ. And at the end, may we be saved in your eternal kingdom. This is our prayer this evening in Jesus' wonderful name. Let everybody say amen and amen. Amen. Amen and amen. I enjoy communicating with the Lord through prayer. What about you? I am certain that you do. Thank you for joining us as we prayed, as we gave to the Lord our gift in prayer. Remember our topic this evening? What gift can I give to Christ for his birthday? Of course, we did sing and we prayed. Now, we want to thank God for all his blessings. And we want to thank each one of you for joining us here online. Now, there is another gift 
that we can give Christ for his birthday. The Lord love when we read and study the Bible, when we read and study his word. Let us give him the gift of his word as we read back to him his word. So we're going to have our scripture reading, and it comes to us from the book of Micah, Micah chapter 6, and we are going to read verses 6 to 8. Let us turn our Bibles to the book of Micah. We're looking at the book of Micah, and we're going to read chapter 6, and the verses there will be verses 6 to 8. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? Or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? Verse 8 He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doeth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy Lord. Amen. And amen. Good indeed is a reading of God's word. Amen. Yes, we are giving God back his word and we want to be able to live by the word of God as he has admonished us. This evening, we continue to give. Remember the topic, what gift can I give Christ for his birthday? This evening, we are giving him a double portion in songs as we raise as we listen, as we listen this evening to Sister Serana George, as she raised her angelic voice in singing the special song. Welcome, Sister George. <laughs>
Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Sister George, for giving us that sweet, special music as we give back to God in special song. So far this evening, we have been giving wonderful gifts to the Lord Jesus Christ. We've given him, namely, the gift of prayer, the gift of reading back his word, and we gave him a double portion with the gift of songs, singing praises unto his name. I think that the Lord is very happy for these lovely gifts. But the question still remains, what gift can we give to Jesus Christ for his birthday? Let us now turn our attention to our elder who will be presenting the topic this evening. What gift can I give to Christ for his birthday? I am sure he'll be able to answer that question. Amen. Welcome, Elder Date. Good evening to a viewing audience. It's a pleasure to be here to speak to you this evening. I assure you that we will have a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. For our scripture of meditation, uh, we'll look at Micah chapter 6, reading verse 6 unto 8. And I'll read it. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with ten thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body? for the sins of my soul. He has showed you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you. To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Uh, let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your love and your mercies. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that is in this place. Lord, we thank you that you would have given us your words. And this evening, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will come very close to us so that we will get a clearer understanding of your word and your desires for us. Uh, be with me, Lord, as I continue to to lift up your name, may the words that come from my mouth come directly from your throne room. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, friends of mine, what would you give to someone you love for the birthday? People all over the world are getting ready to celebrate the 25th of December as the birth of Christ. But what would you give someone your love for the season? You know, growing up, I remember a song that was played on the radio and it even still played today. And the song is titled, All I Want for Christmas. And there is so many different things that the song said that individual wants. Some say they want the two front teeth. Some say they want different um, food items. And so many other songs that we hear of where people want very derogatory stuff. But what shall we give for the body? or the world celebrate the day as the birthday as Christ, what shall we give to him? There are so many things that people want for Christmas. It is unbelievable. But today, my friends, today we are going to look as our title for the sermon is, What gift will I give Christ for his birthday? Now, if I was to give Christ something for his body, what would that be? 
After all, it is his birthday the world is celebrating. What would you give to the one who has everything? He has no lack of anything. What would you give to the one that owns the entire world? He said the cattle are his. The mountain, everything that is in this world belongs to Christ. So what can you, what do you have that you can give to Christ? Fortunately, my friends, the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us in Micah chapter 6, 6 to 8. And we'll read it again, even though I read it before. What shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offering and calves of calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with 10,000 of rams, with 10,000 rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sins of my soul? He has shown you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly before your God. Friends, how can anything that is said or that is mentioned over 2007 years ago be relevant to us today? We are living in a technological age where superpowers are flexing their muscles and means economic instability. Are we at the time or the end? The biblical prophet Micah spoke to a nation who, whose circumstances were similar to ours today. Materialism was the order of the day. Religious leaders was corrupted. Are you seeing some similarities? The rich ruthlessly crushed the poor. The government was focused on self-interest. Public expenditure was high. The end time event was real. In Micah chapter 6, the chosen of God was reminded that God has acted in mercy and grace in their history. He brought them out of Egypt. He redeemed them with mighty righteous acts. Friends of mine, but Israel focus is on external religious rites. For they require offering according to the law of Moses, the offering of 10,000 rams to the supreme offering of the firstborn for their sin. The progression is from the lesser to the greater and right to the ultimate in Micah chapter 6, 6 and 7. But then comes a resounding rejection of owning the way or the way to God's favor. God was not pleased with what they were offering. So let us go into the, 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 the Bible, let us go into the text and see exactly what the word of God is saying. So we're going to look very closely, verse by verse. In verse 6, he says, With what shall I come before the Lord, and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offering, with carve a year old? My friends, we need to understand, in Bible times, there was criteria for selecting offerings. The offering that was selected was without spot and without blemishes. In other words, they were perfect. The very best they have was given. That is talking about quality. So in other words, the Bible is saying in, in, in Micah that the people of Israel offer God quality. And there is nothing wrong with that. But that is not what God requires, my friends. You cannot flatter God for the best, with your best stuff, and thinking that God will give you what you want. It is good, but it is not good enough 
for Christ. And it's not what Christ wants, my friend. You see, the children of Israel wanted God to engage in a let make a deal religion. I give you this and you will give me this. But God was not pleased with their action and with their offering. It is good, but it is not what God requires of them. Let's move to verse 7. In verse 7 he says, Will the Lord be pleased with 10,000 of rams? With 10,000 of rivers of olive oil? My friends, uh, we need to understand here. The children of Israel wanted to give God abundance. And many of us today practice this, 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 this attitude. We want to give God abundance thinking that God will be pleased with the many things that we give him. In other words, they were practicing or they wanted to give him quantity. Remember the first time they wanted to give him quality. Now they want to give him quantity thinking that God will be pleased with what they were offering. So they said 10,000 ram and 10,000 river of olive oil is what they were offering to God. But God was still not pleased with the offering. That was good. But not good enough. No amount of stuff can satisfy my Lord. They also tried the ultimate sacrifice. The giving of one firstborn. But God never asks for that. Not good at all. Thank God that he always revealed the secret things to his children. Now let us listen to what Christ wants. In verse 8 of our, of our text of meditation, in verse 8 he says, He had shown you. So here is God showing us what he requires. He had shown you, O mortal, or O man, what is good. So God is showing you now, Jesus showing you here now what is good. And what he requires, and what does the Lord require of you. Listen up. He says, to act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. This is what God requires of us, to walk justly, to love mercy, to act justly, sorry, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. These three principles summarize all prophetic teaching on religious truth. A life that is displayed, that displays justice and mercy because of a close walk with God. That is what God wants. We need to recognize that Westerners tend to want to move from logical, from cause to effect. But the Hebrew thinking, they move from effect to cause. This principle walk from the visible to the invisible, from the superficial to the real, from the outside to the inside. In other words, to understand what Micah is saying, we need to reverse his sequence of thought. We need to begin studying the text from the end. First of all, walk humbly with the Lord. This is the cause of all other action described. It is based on the first four commandment. Walk humbly is a description of a heart attitude toward God. God's people depend on him rather than their ability. You know, many of us friends, we tend to believe in our ability and what we have. But walking humbly seems to suggest that we depend totally on God and not what we have or what God would have endowed us with. Humility is not about your feelings. It is about knowing who you are and who you belong to. It is not looking out it is about looking out for others. Humility requires us to love mercy and to act justly. Humility comes most naturally when we live in the presence of God. You see, when you are in the presence of God, you have to be humble. Understanding that he is the supreme God and he is in charge of everything. So humility is really shown naturally when you are in the presence of God. My friends, many of us think that we are in our own spaces. 
We think that we are in our own house. But let me remind you, my friend, that God is up there. He sits up there and he looks down low. And he knows everything and he knows everyone. So you are not in your own space, but you are in the presence of God. And when you understand that fact, then you will do it with humility. Walking with God means putting God first and living in conformity with his will. So my friend, there's many of you out there that may think that, 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 that you are not where you need to be and very well so you may not be there. But walking with God means that you need to put him first. The Bible says when you put him first, everything else will be added unto you. Try Jesus today, my friend. A walk with God is like a toothbrush. We need one, but it works best when it is our own. My journey with God is like that. It, it, it needs to be individual and authentic and need to be personal. Only when we walk humbly with God can we practice the first two principles in Micah's list. Secondly, love mercy. This is the first result based on the last six commandment. Mercy is doing the loving and gracious thing despite of sacrifice it requires of oneself. Mercy being to be freely and willingly show love, loyalty, and faithfulness to others. The Hebrew word is more accurately conveyed as loving kindness, fully revealed in God's own character throughout Exodus, the wandering where the wandering children was um, in the Exodus in the wilderness. God's loving, loving kindness is that is shown when God's people would have left him and would have went away. Even Israel's persistent waywardness could not destroy the loving kindness. Of God. God is a loving God. Finally, my friends, act justly. This is the ultimate consequence for those who walk with God. Justice is doing what is right, no matter how difficult or inconvenient it may be. My friends, you know, you might be in a relationship, you might be in some situation, and it looks so bleak and so dim for you. And you may be wondering, how would I get out of that situation? How would I leave that, 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 that situation that I'm in? How would I get free of it? Brethren and friends of mine, once it is right, then you need to do it. God will take care of you. So justice is doing the thing that you know is right, in spite of what the circumstances may be. Justice is sometimes, is something that people show when prompted by the Holy Spirit. It has to do with fairness and equality for all, especially the weak and powerless who are exploited by others. What does the Lord require? God remind us in Micah that it is not the external he, he requires. It is not a ticket box approach that he's after. He wants us to recognize that we need to be broken at the cross by him. We need to realize that, the only, that only when we are fully dependent on God, we will love mercy and act justly. Friends of mine, uh, when we understand this, that we are God's children, when we understand that there is thing that he requires of us, when we recognize, friends of mine, that God is still interested in our soul salvation, when we realize that we are not our own, when we realize that there is nothing that we would have done wrong, that God cannot pardon us, that God cannot forgive us, then we will realize that we need to come before God. That we need to come before God humbly recognizing God as the true and living God. We're going to come before him recognizing ourselves as sinners 
and that we are in need of a savior. And when we come to that point that we recognize that we are sinners and we need a savior, then we're going to present ourselves to God. We're going to present our fall before him. We're going to present everything that we have that is unlike him. And trust me, my friends, God will take care of you. God will fix you up. God will make everything that is wrong right when you come to him, my friends. So you ask, what shall I give to Jesus? What shall I give to Jesus? What shall I give in exchange for what he would have done for me? You see, God, Jesus would have gave his life for you. The Bible said why we was enmity to him, why we, was, we were still sinners. He left the splendor of heaven and came here and died for you and for me. So then what shall we give in return to him? He said in Micah chapter 8 that we need to walk humbly. He said that we need to act justly. And we need to love mercy. My friends, it may be difficult because you might be in a situation that you feel you cannot leave. But God is merciful and his grace is sufficient. He will help you. There is nothing that is impossible with my Lord. My God is a conquering God. My God is a God that never lost a battle and he will never lose one today. Trust him. And make those steps. Take those steps towards God. Because he's already there waiting for you. Friends, I know as we look at, you don't know this season. Uh, there is so many things that, that goes on in this season. So many activities that goes on in this season. And everything that individuals are thinking about in, in, that, in this season, they are thinking about themselves. They are thinking about what they can get. What they want, all they want, all they want, all they want, all they want, and all they can get. But what is it that we can give to our fellow human beings? And not only that, but to God. What is it that God really requires of us? God left heaven and came and died so that we will have life and have life more abundantly. And that is what he requires of us. He requires that we give our life totally to him. Hence the reason why he says... In the book of Romans. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. God wants you to present yourself. Doesn't matter how mangled you may be. It doesn't matter how messed up you may think you are. It doesn't matter how messed up the devil may make you believe that you are. God can fix you up. God can put back the pieces in place. God can do a makeover on your life. My friends, wherever you are, in your houses, sitting on, this, on, on the couch, whatever you are doing, I am speaking to you this evening. It doesn't matter how bad you may be. It doesn't matter what you might be doing or what life or what sin that you might be engaging in at this point. Or what life that, of sin that you might be living. Jesus wants you. Jesus wants you to reach out to him even this evening. He wants you to stretch out your hands and lay hold of him. And I can guarantee you he'll never let you go. Jesus will take care of you. You know sometimes when you, when you give up the thing that you think you're so in need of. There is so many doors that can open up for you. But you need to take a step of faith. You need to take a, a step in the direction of Christ this evening. And Christ will take care of you. My friends, we are coming to the end of the message. And it would be a remiss of me not to make an appeal to you. So it goes this way. If you love Jesus, 
And you understand what he would have done for you. You, under, you understand the suffering that he went through for you. You understand why he even came into this world when he came as a baby. He came here so that he can buy back or he can give us redemption. And he can put us in that right relationship with God. And if you understand that very fact, that everything that he would have done, he done it with you on his mind. Then my question to you this evening, what will you do in return for your Savior? And he said it out there in Micah. As I close, I'll read the text again. Was it? He said, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good and what the Lord requires of you to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Uh, this evening, do you want to walk humbly with your God? Do you want to follow your God? In following your God, you need to give up everything for him and accept him as Lord and Savior of your life. And when you do this, then I guarantee you, my friends, that you will be able to act justly and then you will be able to love mercy. And this is what God requires of you. So will you... This evening, give your life to Jesus so that you can walk humbly with your God and that you can act justly and love mercy. If this is your desire, this evening, wherever you are, I ask of you to bow your head as I pray for you. Uh, Heavenly Father, your word was preached. Lord, and I know that there are many individuals that understand your word this evening. Lord, and there is many that has a burning desire to walk humbly with you, understanding that you are the supreme being and understanding that you love us. Lord, there are many that wants to go with you all the way in baptism, and giving up all that is unlike you. And Lord, we pray because we understand the walking of the, holy, of, of the enemy. Lord, we understand that he would not allow those things to happen. But Lord, this evening, I pray in no other name than the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, that you will just cancel all the assignment of the wicked one. Lord, the plans that he has, I applaud, I pray this evening that you will frustrate those plans. And Lord, that you will come through in a mark and special way for everyone that would have indicated that they want to walk humbly with you and they want to act justly and love mercy. Lord, cover your children. Take full charge and control of their life. And Lord, when you come, Save us all, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Elder Delroy, for that profound message. Yes, friends, yes, we want to say thanks to God for using Elder Dates so powerfully. Above all this evening, the question we have answered. Uh, today, I choose to give Jesus Christ my heart. What about you? I believe that is the best of gifts that he would want us to give to him. God has given us every blessing. We want to thank him and thank all of you for joining us. Let us remember, we must give intentionally and we must give intelligently. Let us choose to give Jesus Christ our hearts. We have a few announcements. Let us remember to join our intercessors tomorrow night and Thursday night at 8 p.m. 
and also on Sabbath at 6 a.m. for an hour of prayer. The Zoom ID, 874-9040-9613. The passcode, 013803. Using the same ID and passcode, you can join the prayer intercessors between 12 noon to 1 p.m. on Sundays and Thursdays. The upcoming programs on Mission Live, Tuesdays we have Pastor's Corner at 11.30 a.m. and there is, will be a rebroadcast at 8 p.m. Youth Live Unplug on Friday evening at 7 p.m. Our Sabbath morning service at 9 a.m. This will be followed by our Sabbath afternoon service at 4 p.m. Join us again next Sunday at 7 p.m. on Mission Live Grenada as we continue our Sunday evening service. We want to thank God for seeing us through this evening service and let us pray as we close. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the way you have led us. We thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity to be in the land of the living. Lord, even as you require of us to do our best, to live our best lives for you, and to give you our hearts. Father, we give you everything that we could ever have because it all belongs to you. We are yours. So even as you've called us to serve you, Lord, we're giving all to you. And even as we would have seen the way you have led us throughout this year, 2023, we want to thank you, Lord, for the way that you will lead us for the year 2024. Thank you, Father, for the blessings, for your love, for your forgiveness, for your grace, and for your mercy. Thank you for the Grenada Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Thank you for the technicians who work well for this year, bringing all the different programs online time after time. Bless them. Bless their families. Bless each family representing our Grenada Conference. And Lord, as we enter a new week, we thank you for the way that you will lead us. We thank you for the strength that you will give us. And we thank you for all our online viewers, dedicated and committed, coming out there, Lord, and sharing the everlasting gospel, sharing the link with their friends and their neighbors. Thank you, Lord, for having your own way in our lives, we pray. And thank you that your will is done in our lives. In Jesus' name, I offer this humble prayer with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. God bless you. Do enjoy the rest of the week.